Welcome to Future Tech Research Institute, Hyderabad. So in this video, I am going to explain the CMOS inverter DC transfer characteristics graphically. Stay tuned uh, and uh, subscribe to this channel for more videos like this, technical videos. And also visit our website to get more information about the training programs, seminars and workshops and so many other programs. Thank you. Here we go. So here we see the CMOS inverter DC transfer characteristics graphical analysis. So this is a CMOS inverter for complementary metal oxide semiconductor. So we have a PMOS transistor and then NMOS transistor. So NMOS is uh, source is grounded here and PMOS source is connected to VDD power supply. Okay, so both the drains of the MOS transistors, PMOS and NMOS transistors are connected together and the output is taken from that common point. So this is your V out and both gates are connected together and that is given to input V in. So we have input voltage and output voltage. So as we know inverter, <coughs> when input is going from low to high, output will go from high to low. So let us connect uh, a load capacitor here. So this is CMOS inverter. So we have the PMOS transistor, the symbol is like this, we have a bubble and uh, you know there are, is MOS transistor is a four terminal device. So we have source, drain, gate and substrate, body. So body it's a PMOS, so drain is P and source is P and uh, body is n type so there's a pn junction so the direction of the current is like this you know uh, so the direction arrow is like this for nmos it is outside so this is nmos transistor okay <coughs> so we'll try to understand the transfer characteristics that is the input voltage versus output voltage dc transfer characteristics graphically uh, by taking now <coughs> the assumption here i'm making is that the pmos and nmos transistors are balanced balanced in the sense they have the same threshold voltage and they have the same gain factor. The W by L ratios are adjusted in such a way that they give the same current for a given VDS and a given VGS. So that is the assumption I'm making here. So it's a balanced inverter. So for a balanced inverter, uh, let us try to understand uh, DC transfer characteristics. Now let, let me draw the output characteristics of the NMOS and PMOS transistors here on the same graph let me draw this and on the x-axis uh, VDS now we have So let me draw the node, uh, the terminal voltages here. If it is V in, a gate to source of NMOS, I am calling that as uh, VGN, VG, sorry, VGSN. And this I am calling gate to source of the PMOS is VGSP. Okay. Of course, VDS, just remember always that the source is connected to VDD of PMOS and source of NMOS is connected to ground. All right. Uh, on the x axis, uh, VDS, drain to source voltage of the NMOS, so zero to VDD. So VDD say let us say it is 5 volt here. So that means it is taken up to 5 volt. Okay. Now this will be VDSN. I am calling it as VDSN. Drain to source voltage of NMOS transistor. 
and uh, on the y axis it is ids n n mos transistor drain to source current of n mos transistor for different gate voltages okay so firstly for gate voltage equal to 0 that is v g s n equal to 0 for this this is 1 volt this is 2 volt say for example huh? 3 volt 4 5 volt for n mos transistor black color so v g s n is 0 for v in is 0 when v in equal to 1 VGSN is also equal to 1. So, VGSN is nothing but that is equal to V in. So, this implies V in equal to 0, V in equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Huh? So, V in and VGSN are same for this. Now, let us uh, look at carefully here. For a PMOS transistor, the gate to source voltage has to be negative so we don't have a negative voltage here but we can just see clearly here vdd is connected to 5 volt continuously and when v in the input voltage is zero that implies that you know it is giving gate to source with respect to source gate is negative minus 5 volt okay similarly uh, that to draw some current from drain, drain to source there has to be a negative voltage from drain to source so that is uh, uh, serving the purpose here VDD is 5 volt fixed. So, the node voltage V out is always less than 5 volt, less than VDD. So, with respect to VDD, it will be negative. V out will always be less than VDD. So, that means drain to source is also negative voltage, gate to source is also negative here. So, now let us see what is the corresponding voltage, the gate to source for the PMOS transistor when V in equal to 0. When V in equal to 0, gate to source is minus 5 volt okay when v in equal to 0 gate to source is minus 5 volt so the corresponding uh, characteristics let me draw with another color here uh, when v in equal to 0 we have maximum current that is uh, like this you know so why i am drawing the other way around because you know when v in equal to 0 uh, vgs n is also 0 so the, there is no current here so that means so there is no current flowing here there is no current so this node voltage will be equal to vdd 5 volt so okay but the, when there is no uh, assuming that previously it is charged to the full so then there won't be any current flowing through this so it is at VDD 5 volt so 5 to 5 VDS is 0 for PMOS transistor when V in equal to 0 so there is no current here to 0 slowly when uh, it is assuming that you know uh, when uh, we uh, this node voltage is slowly increasing that means uh, the drain to source voltage will keep on decreasing so we will draw when uh, uh, V out is decreasing and drain to source voltage is also decreasing so that's why i'm drawing when it is 5 volt it is zero for this when it is 4 vds is minus 1 like that you know so it is coming from the other way around okay so let us see this is for v in equal to this is for v in equal to zero so that implies v g s p equal to 5 volt minus 5 volt minus 5 v g s p equal to gate to source is minus 5 all right so similarly v d s p is 0 there it is slowly it is giving a negative voltage when it is increasing all right so let me draw for other when v in equal to 1 volt what will happen v g s p is gate to source relatively it is minus 4 volt okay so that is what we have to see that is minus 4 means i, I assume that both the transistors are identical uh, means giving the same drive current for the given node voltages so then i'll have a curve like this this is for vn equal to 1 
that implies Vg s p equal to minus 4 minus 4 volt. All right. So similarly, when V in equal to 2 volts, so you'll have curve like this. And when V in equal to this is for V in equal to 2. So that implies VGS is minus 3. Okay. So when V in equal to 3 volt, it is coming down, you know. So I have tried to understand this. The curves are coming down like this. When NMOS is increasing, PMOS currents will come down. So this is V in equal to 3 implies VGS P equal to minus 2. This is minus 1 volt. And this is 0 volt. Okay, this is for Vn equal to 4, Vn equal to 5. All right. So that is the thing that you have to understand here. When NMOS transistor current is increasing, PMOS transistor current is decreasing. Now we don't know what is the node voltage at this output node for different input voltages. So for that, let me draw a table here. Uh, voltages at, at the input. Now for a given input voltage, it will set up some voltage across the gate to source for PMOS and for NMOS simultaneously. So using the Kirchhoff's law, the current through a branch has to be same. Okay. The current has to be same. So the node voltage, the internal node voltage in between this V out will settle at a particular level. Listen carefully. The voltage at this output will settle at a particular level for the currents through PMOS and NMOS transistors become equal for a given input voltage. So these are statements. So that will solve the problem. So we will have to find out for which node voltage, this output node voltage, the currents through NMOS and PMOS transistors is becoming, are becoming equal. Okay. So NMOS and PMOS transistors are becoming equal for a given input voltage. So when you see the in, that will solve the problem. So we'll find out the values of uh, output voltages for a set of given input node voltages. So for example, first take uh, V in equal to zero. So when V in equal to zero, what is the corresponding current curve for this NMOS zero current? Okay. This is the curve. And for V in equal to zero, what is the PMOS current curve? So this is the one. Okay. This is the one. So where they are intersecting. So we have to see the intersecting point. So when uh, NMOS curve is this and PMOS curve is this for V in equal to zero. So they are intersecting at this point. So that is that is VDD. That is VDD. VDD is nothing but 5 volt. VDD is 5 volt. Okay. This is 5 volt. So then uh, next is when V in equal to 1 volt. What is the corresponding curve for NMOS transistor? This is the curve. And for PMOS transistor, for V in equal to 1, from top, you know, this is the one. This is the one. And this is it. So where they are intersecting somewhere below this, you know, here, somewhere here. So that will be less than, a, a little less than 5 volt. So let us say it is 4.9 volt. When V in equal to 2 volts, Which is the curve for NMOS? This is the one. This is the one. Okay. And when V in equal to 2, which is a PMOS curve? This is the one. All right. So now you can see where they are intersecting. Here they are intersecting. Okay. So now finding out that voltage here. Now this is, you know, 0 to 5 volt. So let us say 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. This is 1. 2, 3, 4, 5. This is VDSN and VDS 
P is modulus here. Similarly, the current is I D S N and uh, I D S P of modulus, the current. You know, I am taking both the curves on the same plot. Okay. Now, this is a point. Now, this is intersection point for V in equal to 2 volts. So, the corresponding voltage will be around, say, you know, it is uh, 4.9. It is around uh, 4.4 uh, uh, 4 maybe, 4.4. 4. Okay. Yeah. Next, let us see when V in equal to 3 volts. When V in equal to 3 volts, this is a curve. When V in equal to 3, yeah, when V in equal to 3, VGS P is minus 2 volts. So, this is the curve for PMOS transistor. And uh, V in equal to 3, NMOS is going up. When PMOS is coming down, NMOS is going up. So, the NMOS curve is this. And PMOS curve is here. So, now the intersection point has shifted towards left all of a sudden. Okay. So, this is the intersection point. So, now the corresponding uh, voltage, output voltage, this node voltage, will be somewhere here. This is between 0 and 1 volt. It will be around 0 0.6 maybe. Okay, 0 0.6 volts. When V in equal to 4 volts, NMOS curve is this and PMOS is when V in equal to 4, that is making a VGS P is minus 1 and this is a curve here. This is a curve. Okay, do you see that? So, now this is the intersection point. So, this is near to 1, 0 volt, that is, say, for example, 0 0.1 volt. When V in equal to 5 volt, NMOS curve is this, and PMOS curve is V in equal to 5, that is making VGS P is 0 volt. So, there is no current through this, 0 current curve. So, that means the intersection point is at the origin, that is 0. All right. Now, let us try to draw. the output, uh, the transfer characteristics here, V in versus V out. So, when V in is also varying from 0 to 5, V out is also varying from 0 to 5. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, let me draw a graph like this. All right. Okay. <clears throat> Here we go. So now, <clears throat> when V in equal to zero, this is zero to five volts here. This is also zero to five volt. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So when V in equal to zero. Output voltage is 0 here and V in equal to 1, 4.9, 4.9 is somewhere here and V in equal to 2, 4.4, somewhere here and V in equal to 3 means output is 0 0.6, somewhere here and V in equal to 4 means output is 0 0.1, somewhere here. V in equal to 5 volts, output voltage is 0 here. So, now connecting all this together, that will give the transfer characteristics. Okay. Yeah, so this is the transfer characteristics of inverter. When input is low, output is high. When input is going from high, low to high, output is going from high to low. Okay. Now, when it will shift from high to low, that depends upon the driving capacities, uh, the WL ratios, the current carrying capacities of these transistors. So, that we will see in the next uh, video. And also, this is just a graphical analysis. So, we can also analyze the transfer characteristics, DC transfer char characteristics of a CMOS inverter analytically by taking the current equations that we see in other videos. Okay, thank you. Is that clear? Okay, bye.